Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. We're having a huge AMA with the massively hyped project Squid Grow. Um, I'm going to post a link to our tweet about this space to the top of the space here. Uh, we're just getting started here, but everybody listening, please go to the tweet at the top of the space. Give it a retweet, give it a like, tag some friends in it. Let's get some people in here because Squid Grow is a huge project. I'm very excited to learn about, um, learn more about. As many people know, uh, we've created a partnership, Comet and Squid Grow. I'm going to be pushing this thing uh, because, you know, I, I've gotten some vouchers from some people I know that uh, this is this is the next big thing. And it's it's certainly proved that so far. I mean, everybody's seen all of these copycat grow tokens pop up. So in the house today, we have Shib Toshi, who is the dev, I, I believe, at least the lead. We've got Crypto Blastin and we've got R Dub. Welcome everybody. Let me know if there's anybody else on your team you want me to unmute and I'm very happy to have you. Hey, thank you for having us, buddy. I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. So everybody, like I said, give that a retweet. We're going to do some uh, BNB giveaways today. We're going to learn about Squid Grow. And another thing you can do, if you don't want to retweet that tweet, just throw up a heart, throw up a clapping sign. That lets your followers know that you're in this Twitter space with Comet and Squid Grow and more people will get in here. So the bigger we get, the more fun it is, the more we'll give away. Shib Toshi, man, pleasure to meet you. I mean, we've met briefly before, but pleasure to have you here talking. Uh, can you tell us about, the, for any of my followers who don't know, you know, we got in this one a little bit later. Um, you've already made big waves. So will you tell us, take us back to the beginning. What's What was the impetus for creating Squid Grow and, and what's your background? Sure, sure. So uh, I'll touch base on my background real quick. So uh, I got into the crypto space back in 2011 um and it was in the form of bitcoin uh at the time um i had some friends that were playing these po these private poker rooms online um and the currency to get into that was bitcoin um so that's how i i first originally you know started looking into the whole crypto currency sorry i'm a little scatterbrained right now trying to drink my coffee um um yeah so back in 2011 I, I took some interest in bitcoin i had some friends that were pretty big into the playing playing online poker so when i found out that you know they were they had an interest in it i actually started diving in and and looking into it which it caught my attention i first heard of bitcoin back in 2010 um i thought the same of probably everybody else in the world it was illegal or some kind of scam um but, uh, you know, fast forward a little bit, you know, I had some, as I said, some really close friends that um, played with Bitcoin and I, I dove into it. So that's what originally got me into the crypto space, you know, and as Ethereum came out and some other cryptocurrencies along the way, I jumped into that. And um, I had a very good friend of mine that was in the stock market. Um, there was one particular day that he was bragging about 30 percent gains. I've told this story a couple times and uh, I started pushing real hard on him, cryptocurrency, you know, fast forwarding a couple months, he hits me up one day, it was just a little over two years ago, and um, he starts pushing Shiba Inu to me, something that him and his buddies had found, it's a doge killer, it's going to be huge, this, that, and the other, um, I was really reluctant, but uh over the next couple hours, he was pretty persistent about it. And I found out what him and the rest of our buddies had invested into it. So I thought it'd be funny to, to hold more than all of them together. And that's essentially when I started pulling the trigger on my buys, which was August 1st. Um, over the next couple of days, I, I bought a total of $8,000 into Shiba Inu and I'm sure a lot of people have heard the story on, on that wallet back in November. I, I have um, it. I know that for, for what it's worth, I know that it's a large part of your background. It's a large part of the, um, the, the intrigue about squid grow and about you, your history with Shiva. But to be yeah. frank with you, I haven't, I haven't heard the, the full story, especially. Okay. Well, so, so like I'll, I'll, I'll touch base on that. So, um, 
you know, the $8,000 investment total August 1st, uh, about a very large um, percentage of Shiba Inu. And uh, just like the most of the people that bought Shiba Inu in the early days, we were all almost immediately upside down. Uh, but the, the community started actually growing. And I thought there might be, um, you know, some kind of benefit to, to continuing to hold. Obviously, I did never first saw a ship doing what it actually did. Um, out of the seven um, initial investors that are my friends, um, a couple of them started peeling away, you know, the second that they were able to do so with profit. And uh, they're really kicking themselves in the butt today. But um, I was a big part. Well, not a big part, but I was involved in the, the, the SHIB community, man. And I saw kind of what was going on. And it really, you know, I mean, I really saw great potential there. I mean, the community was just spreading awareness like my own community is right now. That's why I've said numerous times my community uh, everything that they're doing, it's just like kind of deja vu for me. It's like the same thing I saw with Shiba Inu and anybody that was in the early days of SHIB, if they're involved in my community, I'm sure they'd say the same. I mean, it's just, it's like a, almost like a one for one copy of how, how we're doing, how we're doing it. Like the, the growth, the shilling, the tweeting, um, just the spreading awareness. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it reminds me of like SHIB early days. And uh, I, I, I think there's a, a, a lot of growth occurring. And um, if we can continue to maintain that growth and spread the awareness, you know, I mean, there, there's, there's no limit on what we can achieve, but the story on the SHIB to, to get back to that, you know, I, I ended up buying SHIB August 1st, as I said, and um, I held, I still hold it, solid um you know back in um i'll say october my buddy this was the one of the very first kind of bigger dips on shib um my buddy had called me he was the one that actually talked me into it to investing in shib he said he was going to start pulling profit when he told me the numbers that he was going to try to get out obviously not in one go but he had his set number he was trying to pull out i, I was kind of intimidated and worried because I wasn't sure what it was going to get due to the chart or the community. Um, he did ended up, end up executing it, uh, in a way that I thought could have been done a little gentler, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's his money. He, he can pull it however he wants, but, um, you know, the chart obviously recovered and continued to grow. Um, but so touch the touch base on squid grow, and uh, kind of how this came into conception. As I said, I've been in the space for a long time, and I've got a really good friend um, in real life. I'm not sure if he's currently on here. His name's the Huntsman. Oh, there he is, the Huntsman. If, if you could comment, if you could uh, unmute the Huntsman, that'd be cool. But um, he's been in the crypto space a while with me as well, and uh, there was a project that him and I got into. I, I really thought it was going to be a winner, and uh, we got into kind of this um, um, wallet match where essentially um, <laughs> he'd buy more than me. He'd become wallet one. I'd wake up in the morning, see that I got bumped down to two and he bought over. And so I'd just throw more money into it. And we got to kind of got into kind of like a bidding war where we were going back and forth for a couple of days, dumping more money into it. I believed in the project, so I thought it was going to be a win. And uh, all of a sudden, one morning, I wake up to the Huntsman calling me, saying liquidity was ripped out, uh, the project's dead. They got out about $6 million. I, I can't remember if it was four and a half or six. Um, but they got out substantial money and, and killed the project. And that was my first um rug pull that i was involved in and you know, it was just kind of you know i've lost money in this market you know i mean it is what it is but when you get money robbed from you um it's it kind of hits you a little different and uh you're after that some of my friends it kind of the whole scamming thing started spreading like wired wildfire everybody was getting involved in these honey pots or these rug pulls 
and it just started becoming like a poison in the space. And it was at that time I started talking to some of my close friends about the potential of coming out with a project, you know, and obviously, you know, all my immediate friends that know me would know it'd be a safe investment for them um, because they, they know me in real life and I would never do anything malicious. Um, we were kind of debating if we were going to launch on the ERC network or the BSC network. Um, by the time I finally figured everything out, it was November of 21. And I got the contract code written, got it emailed to me from my dev. And, um, you know, as I've said many times, I'm just a crypto investor. I'm not a, I'm not a developer. I am the owner of, of Squid Grow, but I'm not the one that's actually developing the codes. Um, but everything, everything is developed essentially in house. But, um, during the time it took me to, to figure out how to, to launch the, the contract, uh, another token came out, another coin, and uh, that was Squid Game the Scam. And at the time, it was just blowing up. So I was shelf it, and that played out the way that it played out. And, um, you know, kind of essentially just moved on for that, you know, kind of going on with life, making investments and seeing more of my friends caught up in scams. Um, it was around this time I got pulled into a private whale room where I met r And over this period of some months, uh, r and I got to talking about the crypto space and, you know, kind of the negative sentiment that it had and the possibility of, you know, coming out with a project. It's something that I've always wanted to do. And when we got to talking very seriously about it, you know, I told r look, I've got a couple contracts already coded. They've never been launched. You know, if we want to if we want to do something, we can definitely utilize something that I've already got going on. And we decided to drop the, the Squid Grow contract, which is what we did. Um, originally, we want we launched June 17th, but there was an issue with the contract code. So we had to cease. Uh, trading on it and we did a relaunch within uh, 24 hours on June 18th and that's the contract and project that everybody's come to know um, uh, that first day I believe and so, go ahead so when our dub when our dub said I, hey I've got some contracts I've written that we're good no no I they something? were my contracts I told our dub I've got contracts that um, we can use Gotcha. And so is there something custom or specialized that you ordered to be done in those contracts? Is there something that makes the Squid Grow contract unique or, or different? Man, the, the Squid Grow, man, it's just ran by people that care. That's that's what's unique about it. Um, there's nothing really particularly um, special about the contracts. Um, you know, it's got its swap and liquefy threshold. Um to add to liquidity so there's nothing special there um i mean it's you're not to talk down on my my contract but this current contract if i'm being honest uh, the contract we're actually using is not the contract i originally had coded um so kind of to touch base on that a little more as i said we launched june 17th with the contract code that i launched or that i had created um when we launched that it was coded with uniswap not pancake so there as you can obviously assume there was immediate issues with that and uh the delay to get in contact with my dev you know was usually a couple of days so somebody that was on the team had contact with another dev um of the project poo chain is the actual name of the project. And he offered up uh, the code of his contract and uh, it was modified to fit our needs. And that's the contract code we went with. So to answer your question, I can't even take credit for the contract code. Um, It was developed by another dev who obviously brought somebody on to develop it. They did developed it for six months before it went live but the initial contract code that was supposed to be squid 
um, there was an immediate issue because it was coded with Uniswap and uh, we got lucky um, and had another dev step up real quick and say that, you know, we can utilize his contract code. So it was modified to fit our needs. And that's that's um, the reason why we were able to relaunch within 24 hours. Otherwise, it would have been something like 48. And at that point, we had about 85 investors. So we weren't trying to hold up our investors' money, you know, for longer than needed. So that was kind of another reason why we decided to run with his contract. And so we went with his contract, and that's the contract that we had audited. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's, it's awesome you have an audit. You know, you're saying there's nothing unique or special about the contract if it's run by, by good people. You know, I'm I'm a believer in general that – there. It, Sometimes simple is better, especially for a project like this. And uh, and when when you look at a meme project, any kind of meme coin, it always has the potential to do what you guys are doing. Of course, a lot of meme projects don't go anywhere. A lot of simple, you know, whatever they don't, they just try branding and that's it. They don't find success. Ninety nine out of a hundred don't. But it looks to me that Squid Grow is that one out of a hundred that. The higher it goes, the faster it goes higher. You know what I'm saying? It's just going parabolic. It's, it's doing that, what has, what SHIB has done. And your experience from SHIB, I would imagine, is, is part of the reason it's playing out that way. I mean, I can't obviously take complete credit, man. Uh, a lot of... Um... A lot of our growth is, has been the work that the communities put in, man. I mean, they are just, they're out there spreading the word. And to kind of touch base on something, in the beginning, um, I never planned on coming out, flexing my wallets. Um, the way that that came about was we had somebody join the community. Although this whole time I thought it was Papa Stank. Papa Stonks, excuse me. Um, he corrected me on it the other day, but we had a um, a disbeliever, you know, come into the the community that just thought we were another Squid Project. And as this person got to digging, he was digging through the wallets and found a connection with my wallet that fed the deployer wallet, which at the time had eighty million dollars in it. So he put out videos about that and it circulated through i had a team member that's no longer on the team come out with the knowledge he knew about me and confirm that i am a ship whale and uh, it was something that i was not happy about at all but it, it put me in a situation that i was kind of stuck in you know um i i really didn't want that information to to be made public but i think it's actually been pretty bullish for the community and to, for the project itself. I, I do think it's played out in your favor. I mean, definitely a large part of the intrigue about this con or about this project is the intrigue around you, your history, your, your wealth, to be frank with you. Did, has, have you disclosed how much you made of, sh of ship or, or level wallet you are in ship to this day or, or have you gone since you basically got outed to some extent, did you need to just go full public? Um, I essentially confirmed everything that the team member confirmed, which I was the $8,000 investment. Um, obviously at the time that wasn't my, I mean, that one wallet wasn't my only wallet as most whale investors do. They buy from multiple wallets. Um, so the only time my actual total holdings have been put out there is when I put out a video connecting my MetaMask on wallet on one of my wallet consolidators, and that's the only time that you'd be able to see my total holdings, you know, because like a wallet consol consolidator, you co co uh, you connect, um, you know, your multiple wallets, and it essentially just piles everything together. And if you want to move around between wallets, you know, you just essentially click on your investment, and you can play around with your wallets from there but i mean the, the numbers are out there um and uh I've, I've had people hit me up that um you know have good intentions and have bad intentions as a result of that um which oh, is something yeah. that i mean that's you know that's so if someone finds out you've got a huge stack they they'll you know 
So, uh, so that's really interesting, man. And being in crypto since 2011, um, you know, that makes you like a big OG. I mean, that's, that's before most people who consider themselves OGs were involved. Um, do you have a perspective on this part of the Bitcoin cycle that we appear to be in? You know, we're clearly in a bear market. We, we tend to go through four-year cycles with Bitcoin. And this is the first recession that Bitcoin has ever lived to. Obviously, it was created in response to the housing market crash. But now yeah. Bitcoin is live and we're here in a recession. Does your time in crypto since 2011 give you some kind of feeling about how to how to structure this coin through the bear market and, and how to how to participate with the macro market conditions i mean honestly you know as you said i've been in the market a long time uh, you know with everything that's going on with the macro um i mean i don't have any special insight of how to maneuver or market in this space you know i mean there's things that are outside of everybody's control you know um I don't really want to touch on my personal beliefs and get into like um, kind of alluding to like financial advice of what I'm doing, um, you know, because I mean, that's just my personal, personal beliefs and I, I could be wrong and I don't want to lead anybody astray, but um, you know, obviously I've seen this um, whole <laughs> market cycle a few times. I mean, this, this one's kind of bad. Um, and it might get worse. Um, I'm not trying to startle anybody, but, um, you know, I, I've been through a couple of these, you know, and on, on the bright side, you know, every, every year we go through something like this and every year the market recovers, you know, um, sometimes it's a little sooner rather than later. But uh, to answer your question, I don't have like a, a cheat sheet on how to, you know, run a project in this type of market. You know, um, I, uh, I, 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 I my gut reaction is to say that maybe you're you're a little humble about it or you are or or your perspective of what you have in the market and what you've accomplished is maybe uh, subliminal, like it's it's subconscious the way that you are participating in the market. But uh, if not you, what do you owe the success of Squid Grow? Because to bring a project like this with anybody looking at the chart, check out what I just posted uh, to the pin to the top of the space. It's absolutely parabolic. I mean, to send something to 50 million in these market conditions is not common. So what would you owe your success to then? Okay. Uh, well, as I said earlier, man, I mean, we could not give up without the, the strength of the community. Obviously it's backed by my own personal money. And, um, you know, so obviously that helps, you know, achieve if it's the community, it's the funding, it's the connections, it's the team, you know, um, blockchain brothers from Dane, you know, he, he's, able to fill in um the voids that i have with my connections you know i mean extremely well connected individual i mean it, it's ridiculous one of the most uh connected people i've come across in a long time you know in our dub we just think very like-minded you know and he's just a work workhorse i mean the man just got married and he's literally talking to me uh as he's getting ready to walk down the aisle, you know, working out on squid, we working on squid grow stuff, you know, and uh, we're both pulling down 18 hour days. I mean, he just got married. That's the commitment. So, you know, I think everything together as a whole, the community, you know, big part. Um, we, we got that solid foundation. They're going out there spreading awareness. You know, we've got everybody in the background, um, you know, to an extent that, you know, we've got, I don't know, Ardo, what do you think about 20 people in the background? We've got two development houses and 15 developers um, in the background uh, helping develop our project, um, you know, and then it's everybody that you see on the front end of that. You know, we got the Blockchain Brothers, we got Dane. So it's kind of everything together as a whole. Obviously, you know, to, to help send 
in this market, you know, you have to be, you have to one, have the connections and you have to have the funding to, to do, do all the necessary things. And, uh, kind of a struggle that we just faced, started facing the other day. Um, I ran over my Binance monthly limit, you know, as far as funding the marketing wallet. And, um, you know, that if for those of you that don't know, um, you're able to move money about a, you're able to move a million dollars through Binance a month. And uh, that just kind of touches on the amount of money that's gone into this project. And uh, we ran over that with these new exchanges that we've announced we will be listed on this week. Um, you know, so that kind of puts a perspective in the amount of money that's gone into this to, to achieve what we've achieved. But even with the amount of money, without the community and the team being so devoted, I mean, we wouldn't have been able to achieve what we have so far. I, yeah, I agree 100%, especially on a meme coin. The community is everything. Um, I touched on what I had pinned to the top of the space, but I didn't officially announce it. So for anybody who hasn't read it, we are giving away $200 in BNB. That's going to go to anybody listening now that buys any amount of Squid Grow. Just DM me your buy transaction. So after the buy comes through, you'll see on Pancake Swap it says, you know, view transaction. Click that. Send me the link. We're going to pick somebody to win 200 bucks. You can buy $2 worth. You know, you could 100x your money right now, right here today. But uh, Shib Toshi, I agree with you. The community is everything 100%. I'm really excited about these centralized exchange listings you have coming. Is it three coming just this week? Is that what I heard? We've got three tier twos and maybe a couple bonuses. <laughs> a couple bonuses. <laughs> Three is plenty, but that's going to be awesome. You want to be bought from every direction. You've got people on those centralized exchanges that aren't trading in DeFi, that are comfortable with their money where it is, and having the opportunity to buy this overhyped, you know, very not overhyped, this very hyped coin. Uh, you know, I could see people from the centralized exchanges buying it up and, and moving the price. I agree with you, man. It's all about just spreading awareness and, and getting our name out there. You know, um, the community, as I said, is a big part. So as the community is doing their part, we have to continue to, to do ours in the background. Yeah, good deal. And so any hints on, uh, on? can you tell us one that's coming? Can you tell us the letter that it starts with? Or let's, some... let's say, uh, Comet, Comet, bro, let's say we're collecting exchanges like we're collecting Infinity Stones. <laughs> let's hey, go. hey he, he, ain't, he ain't lying. He ain't lying. <laughs> poor, R, poor R-Dub has done so much paperwork this past week. Uh, yeah, I, I call him Formlord. He's the Formlord. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean he, is, he is killing it. I mean... Guys, I mean, this is this is the crypto space. Everything's on chain, so I mean, I mean, it's Follow not the hard. Money. It's not Follow hard to money. figure out. Yeah, it's not hard to figure out. <laughs> well, I love it, man. I'm really stoked about this. Um, I'm, we've got some buys pouring in right now. Shout out to the community buying up some Squid Girl. This is a fun one. Can you tell us what is the what's the impetus for the name? You know, you, you kicked off this huge – Yeah, I think you kicked it off. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I hadn't heard of Grow tokens before this one, and now everybody wants Grow in their name. Why Grow and why Squid? Okay, well, at the time that this uh, Squid Grow was conceptualized, uh, Squid Games was a big thing, right? Or is a big thing. Squid Games is a big thing. Uh, the Netflix TV series. And um, I'm a meme guy. I've made a lot of money in meme tokens. Um, so I wanted to do something that I felt like was memeable and I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to lie guys. It was almost baby Yoda. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, uh, but it was, uh, kind of overly played out, but, um, I really liked the squid games, Netflix TV series. And, uh, I really thought it was a memeable thing. And, um, I definitely wanted to capitalize on that. And I like it. Hey, can I give you this is just off the top. Okay. Can you hear me? 
This is just yeah, off the top of my head. It's something I had thought of before. I never executed it, but I always thought this would be so funny. In Telegram, you know that you can play games using slash game with two E's. Have you seen that? I, yeah, not, there's no. a there's a I'll show I'll show it to you after, but there's a in Telegram app that you can easily add to any Telegram chat and it'll keep track of who's winning the games. It's simple ones like Tesla and Alien Space Invaders or uh, I'm sorry, not Tesla, Tetris and um Space Invaders, stuff like that. Shout out to our boy Elon yeah. Musk real quick. <laughs> yeah. I like it. But I've always thought, you know, Squid Game, Squid, Squid Games People die in the show. People lose. When you lose, it's over. I've always thought it would be really cool to have people put their bags up against each other and play like a squid game. And loser gets the other, loses. And maybe, maybe they're banished oh, from the telegram and the winner gets their bag. Oh, oh man. Yeah, um, I'm not sure anybody that actually I'll do it, bro. I'll do it. Hold a squid game death match. Holy and shit. We'll, we'll put his bag up against somebody. Holy cow. Well, I'm going to tell you, comment. hopefully you don't lose your bag because in 10 months' time, man, you're going to really be hating yourself. Hey, Shiptoshi, I'll play you for your bag. Oh, the, yeah, I need that money. I need that. <laughs> so, so we do have a lot more speakers here. Huntsman, pleasure to meet you. R-Dub, congrats on your wedding. ISO, man, we've been working for a while. Really good having you around. So shout out to everybody here. Do you want to give, uh, Ship Toshi, do you want to give anybody from the team the opportunity to talk about their experience or what they've got planned? Oh, oh yeah, for sure, guys. I can just I can just talk and talk, especially as I start waking up a little more. But uh, I'd like to go ahead and introduce R-Dub. R-Dub is my CFO. Um, he's very trusted to me. He's a very solid guy. Um, I've known him some, for some time now, and as I said earlier, I met him in a private whale room, and, um, you know, our our relationship just kind of grew from there. So, Ardub, you want to go ahead and speak, bud? Yeah, <clears throat> sure. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Comet. Thanks for having us. Um, look, you know, I will, I'll keep it relatively brief. Um, people have kind of heard most of my story before, and... Yeah, I guess it's not as exciting as Shiptoshi's story, but um, I, I got into the crypto space, uh, originally Bitcoin as well, early on in 2011. Um, obviously, at that time, yeah, I wasn't buying uh, as large amounts as Shiptoshi was buying either, but um, over the next kind of, you know, many years, I, I traded in, you know, top 200 coins for some time, and then... Landed in the BSC space probably about 18 months ago now. Um, and, you know, I do say that there isn't, you know, that much that is interesting about my story. But at the same time, um, somewhere along the way there, uh, you know, call it fate or whatever it was, I happened to um, come across Shibtoshi in a private whale group, which... Uh, which actually now that I, I sit down and it hits me, it actually is pretty phenomenal um, and unique. So I guess there is something in there that's, um, you know, a little bit different. But, yeah, Shibtoshi and I met in um, a private whale group. Uh, and as he said, you know, we had started talking about the space and, you know, the relationship just grew from there. We, we had the same ideas. We had the same views of the space. And really, um, you know, that's how that's how Squid Grow was born. As Shib said, he already had the contracts and stuff, but we had a, a very similar idea about what we wanted to do in the space, um, you know, and one thing led to another. And that leads us to to where we are today. Um, yeah, I did happen to get to get married very early on in the picture when Squid Squid Grow launched. But um, you know, priorities are priorities at the moment, and a lot of my time has gone into Squid Grow. Um, and I'm really happy the way things have played out. You know, we've had um, we've had Dane and ISO and the Blockchain Brothers come into the picture as well. It's all just been um, a bit of a fairy tale, but you know, looking at the chart, um, looking at the community and everything else, it uh, it really speaks itself. And you know, I'm really excited. I can't talk about what's coming up in the next couple of weeks or anything like that, but I'm really excited to see where Squid Squid Grow is going to go. Um, so yeah, I'll keep it brief. But um, you know, Dane, ISO, if you guys want to jump on and introduce yourselves as well. 
Hey, so you 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 hinted at something. I wouldn't be a good interviewer if I didn't like, try to tease it out. Can we? Can, so this is a meme token. It is running like a meme token. It's going parabolic. But can you confirm that you are building something, anything, developing something? Ah, oh, well, as Shib said earlier, you know, we've got two development houses in the background with, um, you know, two teams of 15 developers. It's, uh, it's the Squid Grow motto that we under-promise and we over-deliver. We, uh, we don't leak secrets. Uh, all of our previous utilities, we have just dropped them as they were going live, uh, and that's what we're going to continue doing going forward. But we have leaked, you know, one thing that is coming up that is pretty substantial, uh, and that is our bridge to Ethereum. Uh, I'm sure you probably have already heard about that one, Comet, but unfortunately, I can't leak any more secrets today. <laughs> <laughs> all right man well i had to try and i appreciate you telling us uh, a bridge to ethereum uh would be very bullish especially given the market cap and the the whales on the east side you know you get a big enough liquidity pool and an established name like this and you know you could see some massive massive buys coming from eth whales but that's that's been my experience um but i love bsc too i love what you guys have done on bsc um this has been this has been a, a wild ride. It looks like, definitely. yeah, it, def it, it definitely has. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go a little more into detail um, in the bridge. Um, this is probably a good opportunity to do so. We have talked about it with the team. So the bridge is done. The bridge has been done. Um, the bridge is actually being audited right now. But on that note, um, me personally and the team as well um, thinks that. It's probably best to come out with the bridge after the Ethereum 2 comes out. Obviously, uh, there is a possibility that there could be a sell-off when Ethereum 2 comes out. And I definitely don't want to be connected to any type of major sell-off that could hurt my community. Um, so as of now, that's kind of our mindset on it. Obviously, that's subject to change. But that's kind of where our heads are currently. And I think anybody that has seen, um, you know, other projects come out with like a version two um, knows the real implication that it, it could have, you know, either it could pump parabolic or there could be a major sell off as existing whales dump to buy the new chain. Um, so that's kind of where our heads are on that. So we've not really publicly come out and said that yet, but um that's kind of where our heads are right now. There's there's some alpha for the Comet Calls community. So shout out to y'all. Thanks for dropping the alpha in here. The bridge is done, but we're, we're going to wait. And I think that's a good strategy. It's not just, you know, that people could try to sell and, and get a better opportunity. It's also just that, you know, being in the market so long, there's, there's a buy the rumor, sell the news type uh, psychological move that most traders make and I think that's that's a good reason that uh, you guys don't announce anything beforehand because it you know it can cause that kind of cyclical nature of of news uh, actually being a negative on the chart as people buy the rumor and sell when it comes out so I, I appreciate your perspective on that and I, I tend to agree that that makes sense and with that said, um, I think I'm going to pull up Dane. Dane is our marketing guy. He's leader of the Blockchain Brothers. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, very solid guy. He's a fellow Texan. Uh, mad respect to him. So, Dane, if you'd like to say a couple words. Sure. And uh, I'll bring up my side too. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. I can. Yeah, all right. Oh, All good? Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. So. Uh, I'll keep it brief to introduce myself like our dub. Um, I've only been in crypto since 2016, so a little bit more green, I guess. Um, I got in as a lone wolf, did a lot of TA and uh, studied that for a while. I was into Forex and uh, stock trading prior, so that was like my bread and butter. Uh, completely lone wolfed it for like two years uh, and, and got burned really, really hard, uh, completely off guard in 2018 when the big giant crash happened. Um, I think a lot of other people can relate to that. Uh, that wasn't fun, but I stayed in the game. A lot of people left. A lot of people got mad at crypto. I stayed in. I stayed obsessed. I stayed locked to YouTube, and I made a lot of connections in that time. And the, they grew and grew and grew, and eventually it led me to uh, VRA, Veracity. 
uh, which was my first big project that I did marketing for. And from there, I got into the DeFi space um, because that was originally on, in ETH before it went on to KuCoin. Um, and from there, it was uh, it was all project leadership, project management, public speaking, uh, figuring out what projects needed to grow and had a really good time doing that. In the process, got involved with some bigger name projects. You guys may know some of those were Hokkaida, Kishu, HODL Token, Floki, more recently CatCoin. And then that's brought me to where I am today with the Blockchain Brothers. ISO and I partnered uh, several months ago. and we've, we've had some fun, to say the least. Typically, the Blockchain Brothers operate in the background. So that's why some of you may not have heard of us. But we do provide services to many of those larger companies, helping them get connected with where they need to go, helping them get fast tracked, trending, all sorts of things that you typically see in the GGEN space, but really, really done quickly and, and more affordably. So we pride ourselves on you know that. But with Shiptoshi and, and RDub and SquidGrow, we came out of the woodwork to partner with them because it's such an amazing project and such an amazing team getting to know these guys through the past months. Uh, it, it's been it's been a pleasure to say the least and to work along their side. So you know we're here to offer our services and to and to make this thing grow. Uh, and just an example of kind of how we operate versus a traditional marketing company. Um, the other night, I'm sure many listeners are aware, we had a what was it like a half a million dollar sell off essentially from one wallet and a few other whales who followed him. That wasn't fun. We went from I think 36 million market cap down to 13 within about two minutes two, three minutes. And within about 30 minutes, the entire dip got eaten up. And I, and I could say a lot of that is contributed to the strength of our community in Wales. But the reality was we had to react. And it's a testament to two things. Uh, the first, which is Shiptoshi and RDub. It was 3.30 in the morning for Shiptoshi. It was really late at night in Australia after a long day for RDub. And that means that, you know, with, you know, if they had been sleeping, we might not have recovered. And so what we did, we got together behind the scenes. It was chaos. Everybody was DMing us. Everything was blowing up. It was madness. And we, you know, we said, look, we're going to put together a real quick strategy. We know we have exchanges coming this week. Let's let's make that public. Let's let's give them a little something. Let's give them some good news. So we went to chat. We had 200 people in the voice chat. We sat there for 30 minutes addressing everybody's concerns. And we, we bounced back right up to where we got that half a million dollar sell off within about 30 minutes. And it was pretty amazing to see the amount of volume that came through and the amount of people that supported us and, and, and speak up and spoke up in the community. I haven't seen such energy in a voice chat like that. I, I, if I'm being honest with you, it, it, it was pretty overwhelming and, and very humbling to be a part of, but that's kind of how we operate with blockchain brothers. ISO and I, and, and Mateo, our third member, we, we hang out with the project in a, in a much more involved fashion, whereas traditional marketing companies will, you know, they'll do their corporate structure where they have a schedule for you and a calendar and, and they have this and that coming this day. And they don't really understand that the crypto markets are incredibly volatile. And that's not something that can work sustainably when you're trying to grow a young project, perhaps when you're at altcoin status on Binance and KuCoin and all these things. But when you're growing, every moment is vital. And so that's where we pride ourselves on being able to come into the project and, and give a day-to-day -day strategy that's up that reflects the market condition, reflects where the project's at, and and keeps people guessing, to be frank. Uh, but and that's a little bit then, about us. Go ahead, Iso. Yeah, so, sorry to, to interrupt, bro. Um, I think, like, we call it adaptive marketing, right? Because everybody simply wants to make the same moves over and over again with, with these projects in, in, in this space. And it's it's really pretty hard to stay up to date and know which moves to make to 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 grow uh, organically, for instance. So we tend to uh, do some more research into out of the box marketing, right? Stuff that hasn't been done before. Like I'm not, not I almost almost wanted to give it away. I'm not giving it away for sure. But for instance, the Chingari stuff, right? India's TikTok, like no. Uh, we did it okay we did it with catcoin and it blew up but we're doing it again and we have like millions of views and and crazy interaction on on chingari it's puff, popping up on chingari and chingari is basically a tokenized um tiktok right because tiktok is is uh, not available or are uh, blocked in in india so this is the alternative so th those type of moves um you know we tend to 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 make every single day just to um, 
you know, just to sprinkle the, the pepper and salt, as we call it, on, on this project and, uh, and, and keep growing it. But yeah, um, Kami, you know Mateo. Like, you know, we, oh, we've, yeah. we've... I know Mateo <laughs> very well, and I, so I know you pretty well. Dana, yeah, I bro. haven't had the pleasure yet, but I, uh, I totally respect what the Blockchain Brothers do. You know, I am pretty well connected, and I know your guys' work. I know how you work in the background and what you've done for, for many, many large projects. So that's... that's yeah. The you know, yeah, Brothers yeah. is a large reason that I was very bullish on Squid Grow. Great to hear that, bro. You know, we we like like I said, I founded the Blockchain Brothers like ha- a year and a half ago with Mateo, right? It it came out of nowhere. We said, you know what? We keep investing, but it's it's also time to start making marketing moves and 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 um you know find smart w- ways to 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 help projects, right? So and Mateo is a smart guy. He's he's very uh well connected as well uh, so obviously so that's how we started and we grew when and, and Dane uh, came on later like beginning of this year um uh joined us and uh bro the, he's he's been killing it like i'm bro <laughs> on squid grow he's he's i'm saying he's over delivering <laughs> <laughs> if i'm being honest no for real but uh, end of the day um if 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 i have to explain blockchain brothers we we we've been kind of working in the shadows that's how i actually like it and mm, that's what we're strong at it's tell me tell me comment tell me marketing um marketing businesses marketing uh um guys that survive long in this space yeah, they don't they, 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 they don't yeah. they don't <laughs> they don't they offer and it after a couple of months they're gone and and we're trying to keep the quality up we you know, we we will not make any promises we won't deliver, right? And that's I believe that's our one of our strengths, right? So, um, and the like, things we do promise, we do we deliver, right? That's <laughs> and like you said, the space is ever changing. You know, I I remember, I I was in a presale for a for a project from some guys who were in a big project that everyone would know the name of, and. Uh, they tried doing the same roadmap basically that they did seven or eight months ago. And it was, it was a bust. It went nowhere. You know, the space is ever changing. Marketing is ever changing. You have to be adaptable. So definitely I appreciate the yeah. perspective on it. Like for, for instance, with even with squid grow in the beginning, we were heard like we were talking with, with chip Toshi and, and, and Ardub and asking them like, what have you done thus far? What did the previous guys you work with, for marketing planned for you. And they were talking CMS, like crypto moonshots. I was like, oh God, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> that's like two years ago. Like the space has changed. And, you know, it's, you know, actually we're, we're, we already have to think about 2023, right? Um, and and what's, what's next? What's next in terms of marketing? What's next? To be honest, like marketing is 90, let's say 90-ish percent um, you know, is 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 like yeah, ninety percent of the project depends on marketing. It's because so because if you stop with marketing, it's over. And um, it's so comprehensive, right? Like it's it's such a broad term. It can be anything from shilling in your community and rate and organizing those to getting a trending to making sure your website and your white paper looks good. You know, it, it involves an entire teams. It's not just a, like everybody says, Oh yeah, we got marketing covered. Marketing's good. Marketing, no problem. And it's but, also oversaturated Dane. Like how many people offer marketing? Like <laughs> how many, you, you have to protect yourself from the Dane, marketeers. Dane, right? I know a hundred percent what you mean. Like marketing is not one thing. And even, even the community coming together and as you know communities number one that's the most important but how do they market your project what is their vision of the project why do they love the project all of that stuff you know stems from the marketing too so definitely it's a comprehensive and and important that's an adaptive element of the project so exactly I that's the at the end of the day that's the only thing that matters is, is how your project looks to the eyes of an investor and you can't. You have to have that investor mindset and understand what an investor wants to be able to market effectively. And you know, we we all come from DJ backgrounds here. A lot of us here in DeFi, we've been we've been buying shitcoins left and right. You know, we 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 all engage in that to some degree. 
And so I think you have to have a good understanding of that to be an effective marketer in DeFi. And it's that simple. A lot of these bigger marketing agencies that you see, the big, you know, the big massive corporate entities, they don't do that. And so when they come to market a project from its inception, there's so much disconnect and there's so much timing mismanagement and all sorts of things that go wrong because simply they don't understand the space that we're in. And I think that's what we bring to the table in a nutshell between the blockchain brothers and, and to Shiptoshi and Rdub is that we we see what the investors see and we're constantly looking to improve that image so that people are attracted to our project more. Makes perfect sense to me. Makes perfect sense to me. And so what do you, so first of all, I want to say that when that, when that huge dip to 13 million happened, you guys keep saying you recovered. I think you printed a new all time high. I mean, I'm looking at the chart. It looks like you hit a new all time high right after that dip. Yeah, we, we actually uh, did actually. Uh, unfortunately I was asleep when it occurred, but uh, yeah, we definitely pumped up to a new HEH. <laughs> that's wild. That's wild. And that's, you know, I'm bullish on meme projects because of that reason. Like, yes, many of them, are pointless and yes many of them will will fail in the first two weeks but when you look at yeah you can miss 99 times you only need to hit once on one of these to get that huge parabolic insane rally and you know when you haven't even listed on centralized exchanges yet it just feels like especially with what you guys are telling me that there's a lot more to come i have to say something on that note with main points um they Think about this. Why do, why do companies like big brands, big giant marketing companies and advertising avenues use mascots, right? Like think about Aflac, the duck, or Lucky Charms, the leprechaun, right? Like each one of these things has a meme attached to it. The only difference is that uh, these are coming from crypto and meme coins are not what they once were. They, they have real utility. You can, you can talk to meme coin leaders and find incredible utilities across the space. And I think it's becoming more of a norm now. And the real serious projects that, you know, that are labeled as meme coins, if you go and dig deep into them, you will often find that incredible utility. As Shiftoshi mentioned, uh, the, the development teams that we have are incredible. And we definitely have some exciting things coming on that note. And I, I think as people and this next generation that's coming into crypto sort of realizes that this is where most of the money is, you're going to see more and more of a shift to, to brands uh, incorporate memes the same way that traditional advertising companies have. Yep, I agree with it. I believe it. Hey, I don't want to um, leave anybody who is waiting on this hanging. So if you all don't mind, I'd like to pick our winner of the uh, $200 giveaway. We have many entries waiting for it. And the way that I do it so that it is random and fair is I have all of these buy transactions in my DM right now. And I've counted it up. It looks like we have 39 people that bought during this AMA and submitted their buy transaction to my DM. You know, that's not counting who else may have bought and and not known or or not been able to figure out how to get their buy transaction. So what I'll do is line them up one through 39. Oh, another one, one through 40 in my DMs. And Shiptoshi, if you'd like to do the honor, just tell me a number between one and 40. And we'll get this person picked. Let's do 13. 13. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, Oh, this is a big fan of yours. He has a Squid Grow uh, logo. And that's General So Burrito. Joe 27116479. Joe, if you're listening... Shout out to you. You're the winner. I'm DMing you right now. Feel free to request to speak and we'll give you a congratulations, man. Congrats, Joe. Congratulations, man. Nice. All so, right. With, with, with that said, Common, if you don't mind, I'd like to pull the Huntsman and uh, a few other people up to speak if we've got time for that. Absolutely, man. Um, we've got time for it. And, and Joe, we just got you up here. Congrats, man. You won 200 bucks. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Appreciate it, guys. You're welcome. Amazing. You're, you're welcome. I'm glad it went to a true blue squid grow fan. I see you've got the squid grow, uh, Avi. So that's, that's awesome. Your profile picture. It looks like you're a big squid grow guy. Absolutely, man. Of course. No better coin out what, there. What drew, 
what drew you to the project? It, you know, do you mind me asking just cause it's, it's fun. You just happen to win and you know, it looks like you're a good community member. Uh, I saw it, uh, actually saw our dub post it. Um, I kind of faded it initially, you know, kicking myself in the ass for that now, but, uh, got a decent bag there and, uh, been a part of the community for a while, but, uh, really happy and everybody seems really awesome. So no reason to go anywhere. Love it, man. Well, congrats again, and we'll go on to the Huntsman. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Have a good one. You too, Max. How's it going, everybody? Comment. Thanks for having us. This is really uh, – I love the Twitter spaces. Oh, me too. It's, it's so cool that people can just stumble in here, learn about a new project. You know, Telegram AMAs are cool, but but you're really locked in to who in the community is is – intending to be there and set their clock or whatever spaces people just kind of come in and out and feel it out if they want to be here yeah it's cool and then i get to see everyone's like i get to scroll through and see everyone's profile pictures and recognize some people either who we raid with or who we've raided pretty hard um church of pumps i see them in the crowd that's one pe- that's one person that we raid all the time so um i'm the huntsman i'm i'm really good buddies with shimtoshi we've been best buds for over 10 years so um, I feel like I'm not part of the team, but I feel like I just get to give a good firsthand account of uh, the quality of his character, which is extremely important, right? Because anyone can tell a story, but the eyewitness accounts of the story really give it um, solidity. So I'm able to um, just give a different give a different perspective, and I've really bonded with the community. Um, we've been a part of a I've been a part of a few big projects with strong communities, but nothing like this before. I honestly feel like um, just really tight bonds with some of the people in the community, even though we've never met. Uh, we, we speak every day, we go raid together, and it's just uh, it's just something that's really addicting and, and really fun. Like, I don't even watch the charts very much. I get more excitement just of being in the Telegram, and I feel a lot of people uh, have the same perspective as me in that sense. So... Um, yeah, I, I look forward to watching this community grow. If you guys aren't part of the telegram, go join it. We try and have raids, live raids every day. And honestly, we're raiding all day long. So come check it out. It's it's a really fun place to be. um, Yeah, I can definitely attest to that. When I tweet about squid grow every, not only do all my tweets blow up, but everybody who replies to me, their tweets get blown up too. Just the replies, you know, that's it's funny, but it appears to be a very effective rating strategy. And it also incentivizes, you know, anybody who notices and wants that engagement on their Twitter. All they have to do is reply to a tweet about Squid Grow and they get blown up too. Yeah. So yesterday when we were raiding, we had like 100 people in the raid. And people, <laughs> some of the channels that we were raiding, they were like, are you guys bots or like what, what's going on right now? So it was pretty funny. Um, it's, just, it's just good times, man. Hell yeah. Well, pleasure to meet you, man, and happy you were able to join us on this space. Um, I'm glad that you can vouch for Shibtoshi's character. Of course, that is an important thing that, you know, everybody wants in a dev. Um, so, yeah, got the contract audited, got the vouches, got the... I, I just have one, um, I just have one request. If Funny, I see Funny Donald in the crowd. If you could raise your hand, I'd love to hear a couple words from him. This guy is just uh, he's epic. He brings, a, he, <laughs> he brings a lot of joy to the community. I haven't heard his stick yet, but I was scrolling his Twitter a second ago and I saw the resemblance is good. You know, he's got the he's got oh the costume, gosh, so incredible. it looks right. It is incredible. Donald, raise your hand, please. <laughs> Even his bio. Oh. Love the crypto. No one loves crypto more than I do. There's there are so many good community members in this, and that's what makes it so fun. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, here he is. Adding as a speaker now. Hey funny Donald, got you added as a speaker. Thanks for joining us. You are so welcome. And I gotta say, what you've all said today is absolutely correct. I love Squid Grow. <laughs> It has made me hugely happy. My portfolio has never looked better. And I got to say, I did a video yesterday asking Elon Musk 
to rename his dog Squiddy. And I got to say, I've decided I'm not a dog guy myself, but I decided to get myself my own dog and name him Squiddy. <laughs> hey, Squiddy, stop it. Okay, I'm on a call. <laughs> hey, Squiddy, Squiddy. <laughs> Okay, so I just got to say that you're all fantastic. Love what you're doing. And I can't wait to see this go to the moon. Hell yeah, man. Thanks for joining us. I agree. Everything said here has been fantastic, including you. That was fantastic, man. You are so welcome, Squiddy. Squiddy, not on the carpet. Uh, comment. I'd like to unmute uh, Squid Grow Joe and uh, MJ if we could. Yeah. So they. So what you guys want to do is request to speak. Push the bottom left button, Squid Grow Joe, um, and I will get you uh, added as a speaker. But you have to be on mobile and push the button that says request to speak. All right, got both of them. Squid Grow Joe, uh, I was scrolling his profile the other day, saw he was a Kentucky boy. I am too, man, so we only live about half an hour from each other, so that's pretty cool. Happy to meet him. Hey, how's it going? Hello? How's it going, man? Uh, your YouTube videos for Squid Grow, you crush it, man. I, You know, I haven't spent too much time looking into them, but the few that I have, you know, good content, good work. And happy to have another Kentucky in here uh, involved in crypto. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's so funny because it's I, – I, I think – I'm not sure who I was telling someone. I was telling someone the other day. I'm like, this is only going to be the beginning of other people, YouTubers, uh, covering something like Squid Grow because of how massive it's going to be. The huge community, all, all the excitement. And, of course, you know, people like uh, Shatoshi and – our dub just coming through and saying, "Hey, here's, here's more stuff. He is his what else we're working on." And you know, when these people say they're doing something, they're not just like downplaying. It. It's gonna happen, you know. And it's always something exciting to have a team of people that is adamant about what they're doing and caring about the holders throughout the whole way through. So, I, I, like I said, I was saying, I forgot who I was saying it to, but I was like, there's a lot more people, especially YouTubers, that are going to be getting involved. It's inevitable because everyone's going to be wanting to talk about the next big thing. And in my opinion, this is easier the next big thing. But, but yeah, I'm getting that vibe too, man. So what drew you to the project initially? How long have you been involved? Uh, I'll be honest, skepticism. I was like, what? What is this? Because we all heard about the, the previous uh, thing was uh, the previous squid token. And then we started looking into this. And for me, I, I, I looked into this a little bit and I said, okay, whatever. I walked away. I was looking at something else. And then, you know, it, it's, it's, it's gets in your mind again. It's like a, I was, it's like a song. That you just have in your mind, so you go back and look at more, and you go, okay, that's that's kind of interesting. Okay, cool. And then you go back and do whatever. And after a while, you keep, you go, okay, what's this all about? And after looking into all this, after talking with a lot of great people, um, you know, you just go, okay, this is this is this is huge. This is this is for real. And I think that um, the more people get to understand that, it's going to be a lot bigger. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for what Squid Girl's about. Obviously, the, what the Dev team is doing, and what everyone. The community, I mean, you could go on three in the morning, three in the afternoon. Everyone's in, you know, the Telegram. Everyone's excited. Everyone's pumped. And everyone's having a good time. It's absolutely. Love it, man. Love it, man. Absolutely. I'm, I'm catching all those vibes. I'm, I, Like I said, I'm kind of late to the game. Um, you know, I don't think that I got too, too involved until we were already in the tens of millions. But but I'm, I'm getting all the same kind of frequencies that you are from this community and from this project and uh mj i've got you added as a speaker too man love what you do uh playing basketball one of the best to ever do it one of the best lakers ever for sure so that's awesome you guys have uh mj uh one of the best basketball players ever in your community well, I'm not. I, I'm not the real MJ, but I am the real MJ. That's uh, not magic. Crypto. That's not Magic Johnson. <laughs> not the real what? I, I know Magic Johnson though, in real life. To be to be honest with you, um, <laughs> you but, do. Oh yeah, I I was a professional basketball player when I was younger. But that's oh, uh, man, let's go. That's not, 
that's not why we're here. Um, I just, I just uh, want to appreciate you for, for having us here in the Twitter space. But, you know, um, the unique thing about this project is that there's so many people um, with powerful stories on, on how they came uh, to, to be a part of, part of Squid Grow. And I'm thinking about, you know, my own story, which was, you know, getting, getting a Papa who's in here. He, he, he hit me up and said, Hey man, um, I got, I got a project for you um, in my, in my call channel. And I, I said, all right. I said, man, good looking out, you know, um, as, as we just had started, you know, not too long ago and, and, uh, and, and Squid Grow came on. And, and at that time um, I was blessed to, to, to be able to like 390,000 market cap um, and, 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 uh, and get in at 500,000 market cap. So um, in the process though, uh, really, you know, I started hitting up shit like uh, in the, in the, in the DMS and stuff like that. And, and honestly, man, with, you know, the way I live my life and, and, and the principles that I stand for when I saw uh, this guy, you know, most people are going to say like, Oh, you know, you know, the big story is, you know, we got a billionaire owner and he, was a top holder in Sheev and, and all this stuff. But for me, that's not really what I see. Um, I actually see a guy who, uh, who, who, who's, who's uh, probably, I mean, I can go as far as saying one of the most humblest people I've ever met in my life. And, and that's what I'm more attracted to because um, humility is big, man. I'm a, I'm a biblical person and, uh, and, and I'm gonna have to spit because, you know, I preach in, in, in some, uh, in some of these well groups and, and uh, there's a there's a verse in Luke nine verse fourteen, and it says that those who those who uh, humble themselves shall be exalted. Um, and and I think that principle is just powerful because um, as you see what's going on with Squid Grow, um, you can tell that you know there's some there's there's some humility in, in what's going on because I mean he doesn't have to be here. He's not trying to make money off of anyone. He's trying to help many people have the same experience that he had, and he's trying to bring uh, some goodness uh, to the to the um, atrocity that that we have been facing uh in this space and i think that that's what i really appreciate um i mean him being in dms talking to the everyday investor you know answering dms i mean how many people i mean how many millionaires or billionaires would actually even do that um just talk to people um in general but to let alone be the owner like having a million things going on but him and r dub are there answering uh you know dms and stuff like that and and I get the pleasure of talking to him on a daily basis. Like, you know, like yesterday it was crazy when we talked after I was telling them like, man, it was that, that whole thing that happened that, you know, Dane was talking about. And, and I think that's just a testament to, to, to our community and, and, um, and, and the belief in, in someone who's, who's, who's doing, who's doing something good for this space. And I, and I, and I think that, you know, I mean, I've said it, I, I took screenshots and everything. I said this thing was going to be massive at 390. So, and I really believe and I start telling people and I start getting in and, um, and now I got family members in, I got, you know, my wife in, you know, my, you know, I can't get my wife to not want to buy it. And I was telling shit yesterday, man, if you got my wife, you know, wanting to throw in big amounts of money, then man, you, you know, you must be doing something well, because that's a very, very hard thing to do. <laughs> so um, uh, just, just looking at, at what's going on. Uh, I think that, in the end, in the bigger picture of all these things, when it's all said and done, we can look back and say, man, how many lives this team change? You know, I mean, I, I think we, we can all look and say, all right, individually, man, we're going to all moon and have all this money. But but think about how many lives in this world, in this space will be changed forever. And the sentiment that we can get in this space with what's going on here. So um, I could go on and on and I'm not, but um, I just want to appreciate the team, uh, Dane, man, the professional. And he, and he just, he just knows his stuff, man. I love hearing him talking. He's just always on point, concise. And R dub is, is like the chillest person um, in crypto and Shiptoshi is just humble, man. And, and, um, and I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the wells in our group and I just appreciate our, you know, our, uh, our, our, uh, I just I just appreciate our community, man. It's uh it's massive and, and 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 I really appreciate all the things that they're doing. So, thanks for allowing me the time to talk, and um I hope we get to to do this more. And uh, if you're out there and you're just listening and you haven't become a part of Squid Grow, just come to the community. Even if you're like still not sure, come to the community, feel the power, feel what's going on in there, see how see how uh, engaged everyone is, and just have a good time on this ride that we're taking. Because it's, it's, after what happened yesterday. If you don't think that this project is unstoppable, then you'll you'll never think any project is unstoppable. So um, thanks again. And thanks for allowing me to talk, comment. Uh, appreciate you and what you've done for us today. For sure, man. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for, for giving 
your your story of your experience with this to think that you got in at 500,000 which sounds you know pretty high for a stealth launched bsc project and then you still printed a hundred x on it <laughs> it's just crazy and Ma- like massive. yeah and then like you said yesterday or whenever it was for the chart to go down probably 75 percent and then immediately the whole community rallies and takes it back up to to a new all-time high it's just it's it's like you said it's just a testament to this community and to this project about how strong it is and about how it's clearly here to stay and i'm just really excited to see how it performs against centralized exchange listings you know to for those guys that don't really participate in DeFi as much as we do to get the opportunity to buy a super hyped meme coin they usually you know history has shown they jump at the chance because you know there's a lot of gains to be made on a meme coin you know not financial advice obviously nobody can predict the future but we've seen that happen so i'm, I'm excited to see what happens on, on this one yeah man there's definitely some bullish stuff going on and uh after what happened yesterday if you don't think it's bullish then nothing will ever be bullish to you. that's all i gotta say in a bear market guys in a bear market <laughs> Ah, anyway, uh, you guys were talking about changing lives. Um, I, sometimes we don't really realize, but even at this market cap, for for people who bought in like really early, just one buck, two bucks, three bucks, four dollars, whatever, invested in his token, we've changed those lives forever, right? Realize that. And I know some some good friends who were completely broke. And invested small amounts of money um, on on these moonshots, and and their lives are changed completely, right? They can support their families. They can do, you know. I'm not giving giving any financial advice here, but we are already changing lives here, so realize that. Love it, man. I'm bullish. I'm very bullish. Uh, Shibtoshi, do you uh, want to take any questions from the community? Do you want to give us any closing thoughts? We're about seven, 75 minutes in. I'm I'm happy to stick around. I'm not pushing you off. Feel free. Just do whatever you want. I'm just. Yeah, I'd, I'd love yeah. to take questions. I'd love cool. to open up the floor. Awesome. We've got uh, Matthew. You know, I don't know. I'm just accepting whoever requested in the order they requested. So, Matthew, we've got you added as a speaker. Do you have any questions for the Squid Grow team? First off, thank you for having me. I don't normally do the, the Twitter thing here, but. And uh, I'm happy to come and listen to what you guys have to say. You know, I had a friend recommend me this project uh, probably a week and a half ago, and I didn't really look into it because there had been so many DGENs, and I stepped away from crypto. Uh, that was my mistake, obviously. But uh, I'm in it now, and uh, I'm really, really proud of what you guys are doing, I'll say. I was I was involved with uh, Grimace Coin. I was the project manager on it for a couple of months. You know, I rode that thing through two all-time highs, could have cashed out three hundred thousand dollars. I didn't, uh, and then you know things happen and the space changes, and uh, eventually you know you move on to look for other projects that you know might actually do uh, something amazing and uh, you know create this opportunity. And I think I get Grimace Coin community vibes, and I don't know how many were involved in that. I'm not trying to show any other token. I'm not saying go buy it, but you guys have an incredible community here. And I was involved over there in that community. It was like so passionate. We've been working so hard together. Um, and I think you guys have so much more potential than a coin based off some silly restaurant. So my question is, what are you guys going to be doing for the long term? And this is what I ask everybody. Anytime I get involved in a project, whether it's an investor joining the team, I'm like, how do you build that long-term sustainability that goes beyond community hype? I know you guys are NFTs, they're staking. Um, what are you guys going to bring to the table that's going to innovate in the space and bring on new investors that aren't here just for the community, but looking for innovative changes that ensure investor confidence? Dan, you want to handle this? Sorry, guys. Could not get to my freaking app. 
Yeah. So long term, uh, we we've said it before, and I hate to say this thing over again because we've heard us say it, but we we under promise and over deliver. And when it comes to long term, there's a lot of things that help long term, and that's the utility side. Um, I know that the bridge that the Shoshi and his team have made is amazing. I've seen it. Um, it's it's going to be something that's extremely secure and done very thoroughly as far as all the ins and outs. That's just a small example of, I think, some of the future utilities that will come. And they'll come when they're ready, right? Like, we're not going to, like, hype them up for a long time. We, we notify people of the bridge because we want people to know on the east side that we are coming to them and that, and you know, they can have that to look forward to. But when it comes to other things, we can't really reveal that. But with long-term strategy, um, it's you can't just say, hey, we're going to do this in six months or this in three months. You've got to get to six months and three months first. And that's an eternity in crypto, as, as we all know. So it's, a, it's again, it's a day-to-day thing. You have to be there uh, putting in those hours. And it's not like a little part-time job. It's a full-time job and it's maybe even two full-time jobs. And so you've got to have the team and the community that's passionate to be able to drive that through to the three months and to the six months. And, and the other thing, too, is you can't always be reactive to the market. You have to be proactive behind the scenes. So we've got kind of two things going. You know, for example, with the tier ones that everybody wants, those sometimes take several weeks to get onboarded with. So you have to start making that process happen if you want to get on something like that. And so when it comes to long-term strategy, we're always working on bigger plays that take sometimes weeks or even months to roll out in the background while at the same time paying attention to the day-to-day tasks. And I think doing a combination of both of those will get you to that longer-term success and and not just one or the other. And I, I think a lot of teams make the mistake of only focusing on one or the other. For instance, a lot of the DGEN plays you see are only focused on the short-term. They want a quick call-out group or they want this, or they want to fast-track this or a trending that. That's good for like a day, but then once you've spent your money and dumped your money, what do you do? And then you've got the opposite effects when it comes to utility-based projects that may sound boring. Um, you've got very little marketing, but then they talk about this incredible use, use case and value and thing they're going to bring, but they don't have a date on it, or perhaps it's three months or two months away. And so that, why would I hold a token like that, right? What makes me want to hold it tomorrow and the next day? And so I think I think the important thing is to realize that we we have both of those focuses, focal points happening at the project, and and that's going to stay that way. Until Dane, you get to that longer term vision and you see those big utilities unveiled. Dane, don't forget, right? People people don't know what's happening in the background, but we actually have a legal team working with us. We have a lawyer, we have like this is not like <laughs> this is not common with, with you know with meme tokens like we are. End of the day we're we're a meme token and we're developing utilities as well. But we also have a partnership with one of the, you know, uh, biggest uh, market makers in this space. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they can, can tell you something about CLS and, and how they are helping us on the long term. Um, and, you know, for the regular investors, it's like, oh, this, what's, what does that mean? Like, no, like we're, we're doing these partnerships with, you know, with with these big dogs because we see what's coming um, in not in weeks, but in months and years. Right. Yes. When is the it's... next Netflix? When is the next net uh, squid grow Netflix series coming up? Think about <laughs> yeah, that. Who knows, man? Think about that. Think about that. Right. We're, we're not here for, 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 you know, for weeks or whatever. We're here to stay and grow and, and make, you know, um, make good moves, make great moves. And people have to understand we're taking this really serious, right? This is not a joke or anything. We really want to reach the billions, right? And if I'm going to say something very, 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 um, yeah. (laughs) Would you buy Shiba Inu if it was at 40 million? Think about that. Yeah, and, and just to clarify on your point, I so before we go away to another question, the CLS thing we didn't talk to, touch on that too much. For those that don't know what a market maker is, it's what makes it's what ensures your volume stays healthy on exchanges, right? They they help make sure the order books on both sides of centralized exchanges are are full, so that you can actually do big buys or big sells if you if you have tokens on there. Um, if you notice that some of the older projects, we'll say from the ETH days back around the time Shiba Inu came into inception. 
if you look at some of those older copycats, you'll find that they have tons of exchanges. But when you actually go on CoinMarketCap and look at their volume, you'll see their volume is oftentimes just a couple hundred bucks. And why is that? Well, I can promise you that once upon a time, they probably had some type of market making done either in-house from their own project or from a, a third party and let it go. The thing is with our partnership on CLS, we're not going to be letting that go. We'll keep that current and that will keep that liquidity and that market cap and that trading volume on all these exchanges balanced and it'll make it look healthy when you go and look at where we're available to purchase so that if you actually want to go purchase on one of those exchanges as a new investor, you'll be able to do so. And that's just a small example of the longevity mindset that we have for the project. It's not just like some random third, you know, random guy that does our market making. It's a legitimate, well-known company. And I would say they're top five for sure. Um, you know, I've only got a few more that are more prominent than them. And those are typically the ones you might deal with on like something like Binance or something where you need more, more output, but CLS, you know, that's, that's a, a great company and we're happy to be with them. And that's a little minor example for you of how we're already thinking about six and nine and 12 months from now. Exactly. And, and don't forget, you know, a lot of people tend to just focus on pancake swap, right? We also have liquidity on the other exchanges and that liquidity also grew with the project right so there's money to keep investing in this project and to me that's a sign like normally when i invest in projects myself it's like okay how much money is available how how sustainable is this on the long run and when i see like okay there's this on pancake swap wait that's crazy amount on bitmart there's some money on pkx there's some money on and so on and so on and so on and so on and you know then i'm like okay this this I'm 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 gonna sit this one out. I'm I'm gonna enjoy this ride, and uh, you know, and 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 grow my back. That's that's how I roll. Well, Basically. thank you for the great great answer. Uh, I appreciate it. I understand you want to hold a bunch of cards pretty close and reveal in due time. But it sounds like you guys have a really good plan for the long term, and uh, you know, I can't wait to you and the, and the community keep doing. And thank you for not amount, announcing a metaverse on day one and having a shitty Unity engine demo <laughs> by the second week. We, yo, comment, we that. won't launch an <laughs> NFT marketplace. Like, don't. like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, I, I, it's so funny with all these other, like, actually, some of the bigger ones, like, that was the end of them by announcing, like, a zillion utilities and not focusing on the strengths of a couple of good ones it's just all over the place let's do nfts let's do nft marketplace let's staking farming blah 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 and end of the day they did all the utilities but then what like you know you have to have a solid game plan and and, and for us it's in development and you have to have value too you have to be able to exactly when you, when you, when you bring utility you want to know why 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 am i bringing that utility not just because i feel like it makes my market cap go up but because it actually adds value to something or even solves a problem even better and that's the type of mindset we have with the utilities that we're going to bring out and the first you know the one that we have right now that you've seen the staking and farming everybody knows who's in them those rewards are juicy They're, they are nice right and so that's an attraction and we know that and so when it comes to further utilities we're going to make sure that they have a place within our project and if that makes sense hell yeah let's go <laughs> yo i just want to i just want to say uh man shatoshi bro thank you for everything bro you have done for the community, man, and thank you for you know uh, bringing out this wonderful project, bro. Uh, man, you, you're a legend, bro. You know I told you that, man, many a times, bro. I have you know saying tweeted about it or whatever, bro. Bro, you're a legend. You know it's a lot of people, bro, man. That uh, you know lives, man. That you're changing, man. You know people, man. That never ever got to talk to a big in there before in their life, yet alone, man, a big in there, bro. So. You know, thanks for all you do, man. The Huntsman, bro. Thanks for all, man. The Twitter rays, bro. Everything you do, man. Man, you're a wonderful guy. R Dub, bro. You're a great guy too, man. And man, just thanks, man, for the, you know doing what what you guys are doing, man. And you know, to help change other people's lives, bro. People who you know never made you know a 10x or 20x, you know what I'm saying? And 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 the crypto, you know, I got people in here, man. This is their first crypto ever. You know, so, uh, man, shout out to everything you're doing, bro. I've been in since, man, since day one, I think like an hour after lunch, I've been in, bro. And, man, I'm not selling this thing, bro, till we get to billions, bro. Hey, thank you, man. I I'm glad to hear that you you got in early at the top. Uh, we were at 2,000 X's 
So in in this market, that's pretty impressive in my opinion. But but thank you for your kind words, man. And and again, it is about you know the everyday investors, and that's one of the the main reasons we decided to launch on the BSC first, and then bridge to the Ethereum. You know, in, in my personal opinion, you know I think uh, you know more so the everyday investor is going to be more inclined to uh, invest on the BSC side. You know, uh, the gas fees are. A lot cheaper obviously and, and a lot less intimidating so you know when we when we drop our bridge you know the everyday investors that have not dabbled on the ethereum side they'll definitely have the option and ability to to kind of cross over and, and you know try the the east side out I, I love ethereum you know i mean obviously that's where uh, a big chunk of my money is held and um i'd like to you know there's a lot of people that it's either bsc or ethereum there's not a whole lot of everyday investors that invest into to both of them. And I think we'll be able to change that, you know, for a lot of people, you know, um, I'm just definitely excited, man, for, for everything we have coming in. And thank you for your kind words, man. Hey, I'm excited too. You guys have uh, given us some alpha. We've done a $200 giveaway. You've, you've told us about the history of Squid Grow and, and, and the future and, and a lot of reasons to be bullish on it. I'm coming up on a hard stop here. I'm going to have to have to head out, but I really appreciate all of your time. I appreciate what you've given uh, my people about your token, about your project. I hope they're as excited as I am, and we'll have to do this again, man. We'll, and we'll have to do a, a Squid Games death battle. Let me challenge somebody in a Telegram game. And, and I'll put my bag up against them. Wow. That's, that's <laughs> some straight Squid Game stuff right there. <laughs> that's Squid Game, takes bro. All. We got to do oh Squid Games. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I'll just, right. do, I'll just do, you know, I'll do a sub bag or something. I'll have a separate. We'll, we'll do a $200 or $500 or something like that. Ooh. Yeah, that's definitely like a Russian roulette type of game right there. <laughs> I'll DM you about it. Let's set it up, man. But seriously, appreciate your time. Appreciate all your people. Huntsman, R-Dub, Dane, ISO, all your community members who came and said, what's up? Squid Crow Joe. Um, appreciate all of you guys. And, and we'll catch you guys next time. Hey, thank you, Comet. For thank you, Comet. It's an honor. And a hey, you. thanks, bro. Thanks awesome. for having us, man. See you all. Cheers, thanks guys. a lot, bro. Cheers. Catch you later, bro.